Hi everyone, welcome to SweatPod. I'm Sharifa Jay, your co-host, and I am joined today by... Erin Dussard. So, I can't <laughs> even believe that I am sitting next to an actual Olympian. We don't have two heads. <laughs> <laughs> We're really normal. I know, <laughs> and I'm just Googling pictures of you. <laughs> <laughs> and put it for my wall. Like the amazing Jeanette Quache. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Really good, thank you. Really, really good, thanks. And thanks for inviting me on. Right, oh, it's so coming. good no, to have no, you. Yeah, I know you're very busy, you've got a busy sketch. Yeah, but it's all right. We've got Next little time. ones. I well, know, little, little two, two small <laughs> kids. It's a lot. Yeah. No one tells you, don't have kids. No one tells you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a lot. So since um, no longer competing, mm -hmm. how has life been? It's been, a, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, if I'm honest. I think that. When you decide to call it a day mm. as a professional athlete, it's not necessarily on your terms. Okay. You know, you, you'll probably be injured mm. or you're too old, or okay. it's just something that doesn't necessarily fit with how you maybe thought it was going to go. So for me, mine was forced injury. Okay. And I what felt did you do? I had nasty Achilles injury, double Achilles. It was horrible. Rupture? Um, no, lineal tears. So okay. two small tears. I had to have surgery, it was absolutely horrendous. And it was in an Olympic year, 2012. It's just the whole thing oh, was I remember just that year. Yeah, well. it was just even for horrible. non like non-athletic people yeah. in 2012, I was like yeah. very sedentary. It, 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 was, it was an amazing year. The Olympics were incredible. I remember watching just, them on yeah. on a I was working for Samsung at the time, and I remember seeing them on a Samsung phone and being like, whoa, that opening yeah. ceremony. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, and this is the thing, like, I'm, I'm an East London girl, oh, so, so it was on my well. doorstep and I'd been to the one previously in Beijing. And then, so for me, I thought, oh, it's coming to East London. Well, mm. it's written, of course I'm going to win it. <laughs> yeah, of course yeah, I'm yeah. going to do so well. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be life changing. And then it didn't happen, you know, and it's injury. And then I think that that's when you really respect the body mm. and you understand the body will do what it wants. So at that period, wants. was you actually training for the oh, games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like training. full training, full time athlete training. All I had Olympic sponsors. Like everything was on the line. Like it was. I, that was my job. Mm. And then um, eight weeks before the games, yeah, it was that close. It was that soon. So, oh my goodness. Yeah. In the how, end. How was that mentally? Yeah. Um, it's a good question because I, at the time, remember crying a lot. Mm. And I remember feeling that was quite a natural thing. Yeah. Like, I'm going to cry about this. I'm going to be upset, of course, because, you know, it's a dream that's just, you know, completely gone out of the window. And in terms of how I came back from it and decided to move on, I just decided, OK, I cannot dwell in this. Like, mm. I can't let this define me, if that makes sense, because I'm only, what, at the time I was 29, going oh, on 30, okay. and I just thought, I can't... This, this, this ain't it. Yeah, you yeah. know, I'm still very young. And this is not going to be my definitive moment in my life where everything kind of looks down to this disappointment. So I kind of just, I flipped it a bit. Mm. And at the time of the games, you know, of course, I wanted to book a one-way ticket out to anywhere yeah, yeah. apart from London because we were consumed yeah. in London with the games. And I thought, actually, no, well, no, I'm going to stay. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't know when I'm ever going to be able to experience an Olympic Games at home mm. as an athlete or not. Yeah. Do you know, and I think that's quite important. And I don't want to be the mum or the grandma that's telling my kids that, you know, I up, up sticks and I didn't, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, remember yeah, anything, yeah, I didn't yeah. watch yeah. anything. I thought, no, let me do it, because I'm, I'm from East and I yeah, love yeah. where I'm from and I love Olympics. I, that's just been my thing from a young girl. And I just thought, I'm going to stay. And off the back of that, loads of broadcasters were asking me to come on and have a chat. Mm. And, you know, yeah, it was hard to yeah, talk yeah. about yeah. what I wanted to do and why I wasn't there. But I got a bit of a bug for the media okay. and I respected what the journos were doing because as a competing athlete, you never really think about behind the camera mm. and what's going on production wise. So I decided that, OK, that's probably the next natural progression for me in my journey. And what an amazing step, because obviously you recently, I'd say recently in the last few months, um, have your show with BBC yeah. Radio London, which yeah, is amazing. Yeah, Keep, what, yeah. Tell us a bit more about your show. I, I did come on the yes. show, by the way, if anyone wants to... Um... You, Sharif was brilliant on my show. So yeah. I have a show every Friday night. It's <laughs> called The Women's Sports Show. It's on BBC Radio London. And it's the latest in quite a long line of things that I've always wanted to achieve when it comes down to media. Um, I'm a massive advocate for women in sport. Um, so when Radio London approached me and asked me if, if I fancied it, I said, are you joking? Of mm, course, yeah. like, why not? I'm busy, yeah. of course, but at the time I just felt that at the moment where women's sport is in this country and actually globally, mm. this is a nice platform. Yeah. If I'm honest, guys, I kind of want to get it to a point where 
we're not talking about women's sport. Okay, you know, it's just, yeah. just sport. And yeah. we're all integrated. But right now, mm. there are some amazing stories that need to be told and not just on an elite level. Yeah, yeah. I do feel that women's sport has to be reported a bit differently, you know, yeah. when it comes down to the stories behind it, your motivations for running and getting fit versus... Um, an elite athlete that's out there performing mm -hmm. for an Olympic Games. I do feel that there are different layers and dimensions. So that we cover that in my in my show. Wow. It's all London, yeah. which is great for me yeah. because, like I said, I'm a massive Londoner in that sense. So there's so many stories out there. Do you speak about like diversity and representation and things like that as well? A lot of the stuff we talk mm. about is that because yeah. there are so many intersections when it comes down to women and mm. sport, yeah. gender sexuality, race, mm. it, it, the, the intersections, you could, you could crisscross at any point. Yeah. And it's so important that everybody has a platform and there's representation across the board. So I get so many of the girls' emails to the, back to the show about community groups mm -hmm. that yeah. work in diverse places and want to be able to showcase what they're doing for a particular demographic of London. So it's a huge, huge part of my show, making sure that everyone's included. I'm, I'm not an athlete, but like I've definitely seen in the last um, half a year or so, a huge shift in like diversity in sport and advertising. Mm -hmm. Like I know that some of the work that I've been doing with the London Marathon and being a plus size model, a lot of people want to showcase that. But also, um, particularly in swimming as well, like swimming events, trying to get more um, like black swimmers involved, because obviously it's such a, this we were talking about this before like a a bit of a myth like black people can't swim you know <laughs> you know you guys just sink to the bottom yeah. <laughs> you know which actually i did a bit of research and 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 typically like people from black descent have i think it's 10 percent higher bone density so it is a bit harder your bones are less porous so it is a bit harder but black people can swim of course we can absolutely can yeah. swim and mm -hmm. i think but but it's about the representation in the media and the representation for the, from the brand. And do you know what, Sharifa, yesterday, well, just very recently we had on the Black Swimmers Association mm. and they came on the show and in particular, they're talking about the barriers mm -hmm. to swimming and mm -hmm. to the black community. And we all know that swimming is a life skill. Yeah. You know, you want to be able to teach your children how to swim. It's very important if you yeah. go on a holiday, if you go anywhere, it's a life skill. But the barriers to entry, the main one, what do you think it was? I'm going to go with, just because I did the swim serpentine last year, yeah. and this was the biggest thing that I brought up with the BBC, mm -hmm. I could not find a swim hat. There we go. I was like, I it went, is into, literally, literally, I went it's into Decathlon. It's and, I, and, and I mentioned this on the BBC, yeah. Yeah. but they didn't, they didn't use it in the final oh, Well, edit. we have this so, platform now, so we can yeah, speak about it. Yeah. Basically, wow. hair. Hats. It's hair and swimming hats and caps. So we very recently had a lady on the show. She was absolutely unreal brilliant woman and she has a brand called Nemes yeah and you. this brand is yeah. a waterproof headscarf for okay. black hair yeah. and she said that when she took it to um, different associations that are you know represent swimming that are non-black yeah, they were yeah. like oh my god where's this thing been and she's literally <laughs> like well you haven't thought about it yeah, because you haven't exactly. needed, haven't needed to, think, to. Yeah, think about yeah, it yeah. so here we are now and it's her young children now are having a completely different experience yeah. with their hair when yeah. it comes down to swimming because when we were kids we had to go swimming, right? At yeah, school, yeah. it was part of the curriculum. But if you went every Tuesday, that meant every Tuesday night, your mum is putting a comb through your hair. Seriously. I remember so being in the changing room in tears in the corner. Yeah. And I grew up in a white area. Yeah. The only person with this little afro, this little messy <laughs> afro. And I remember like sitting in the corner crying, trying to pull this hat over my head. Possible. And then being like, come on. But obviously no one was there to help me. Yeah. And actually that created these really negative, like young, yeah. like early experiences for me. Mm. And getting back into swimming, I only got back into swimming when I was 24. And, and I so still can't wear a swim hat. Yeah, and at the swim serpentine, the at the swim serpentine, there's pictures of me, my hat is slipping off my head. <laughs> and my goggles were on upside down as well. But, but that was just, that was not, that was nothing. That was no one else's fault yeah. but my own. But you just think how crazy yeah. that we are in 2020 yeah. and brands are not thinking about this. And it's almost... A little bit insulting. It, it, to, to, <laughs> a little. To, to a point and to a degree, but I think when we then have to look and see that when people actually see that those kind of prototypes are out there, yeah. they're going to be thinking, oh, okay, mm. we can market this. Yeah, and that's when the big yeah. brands start coming in. Yeah. 
that's when you start seeing things like yeah. pro hijabis. Yeah. 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 So when you start seeing things like that, and you can see that Muslim women now have been given a, an opportunity to wear performance hijabs. Yeah. Nike do yeah. them. Nike do yeah, them. Adidas do. have got one yeah. in development. Yeah. And I think that these are the things now where you look at race and you look at um, and, and sport and performance, brands have to understand that it's not linear anymore. There are so many different offshoots in terms of being able to get women into a position whereby they feel included yeah. in what's going on, especially as the demand for women's sport grows. Definitely. And I also think another thing as well, if you are a curvy woman and you want to get into a wetsuit, Oh, yes. Whoa. Yeah. Like, I, they are so small. Yeah. I mean, small. I just managed to fit into mine. I feel like a ninja every time I wear it. Um, but but, it's great, off but my you pants. look great in it, you know? Thanks very you do? much. You look great Sometimes in it. Sometimes I wear it on my Tinder date. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> with my medal on, yeah. I did this. But, you know, I think as well, if you want to get into that sport, how do you even get into it if yeah. it's not available for you? It should be made available. And I think when you say that, Sharifa, then you're looking at... Um, you're looking at governance, you're looking at all the boring side of things, you know, who's in the boardroom, yeah, who's yeah. making the decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And unfortunately in sport, we're still very long way away from mm. a board looking as diverse as us mm. or even, even, you know, even a little bit. Mm. Yeah. And then sometimes when you do have a level of diversity in the board, they're really trying to appease yeah, and yeah. just make sure that they're just trying to get their point Tick across. Boxes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think we've still got a little bit of a way to go in terms of the shift, but it's the market that drives the shift. Yeah. It's the masses that drive the shift. It's the people that are involved from the ground up mm. that will be the ones to say, right, here we go. Let's make some changes here. Do you, do you say, would you say that you feel represented in the fitness industry? Like, you're, do you see yourself... In kind of in advertising um, in the I do now yeah. I do now um, it's really it's a really weird one for me though because I guess I'm, I'm coming from a professional sports mm, background yeah. and people always ask me oh when you were growing up did you ever feel like you could see yourself and you know what the answer is yes because mm. I'm a sprinter yeah. in yeah. fact everybody looked like me mm. do you oh, know wow. what I mean yeah, so yeah. I've got a very different perspective yeah. in yeah. that sense where I turn on the television and watching the Olympics, you know, 1992, 1996, showing my age here. <laughs> and it would be an amazing yeah. lineup of black, yeah. female, yeah. American sprinters, yeah. glamorous, gorgeous, ready to roll, fierce, fast. And then you're sitting there as a little girl and you're thinking, I'd love to be like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, very, it's a very different feeling. So I spent a lot of my formative years actually having very positive yeah. Yeah. representation of what I wanted to be yeah. at that stage. Yeah. Had I wanted to maybe go into media, yeah. Yeah. would have been very right? different. And I wonder if you hadn't have had that representation, yeah. how maybe if everybody in the lineup was Asian or white or, you know, man, you mm. might have thought, You're well, oh, well, I can't be there because You're, they're not there. You're not caring. The, the classic Beyonce saying, you can't be what you can't see. And it's so important. Yeah. And I say it all the time, mm. you know, and I think that's when you, when you think about representation on that level in different types of fields and you see where we are versus where we aren't, there's still, mm. like we say, there's still a, yeah. a way to go. But then if you look at sometimes, if you've got people around you that are encouraging you and they genuinely believe in your vision, they'll push you regardless yeah. because they can see that the talent is there yeah. and they don't want that to go down the wayside. Yeah. So know? do you think brands are, are doing it because they want, to, they see pound signs? Yeah. Or is it more that they actually do want to include, be inclusive and things oh, like that? come on. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> always pounds. It's, 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 it's a business mm. opportunity. I guess you may have the one visionary in the boardroom, yeah. the one visionary in the creator's room that says, actually, you know what, this would be an amazing thing if we can do that. But then that very quickly gets flipped. Yeah. OK, this is a commercial mm. opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Because if it's not, then what's the point? Yeah, yeah. You've got to look at people like Tiger Woods and what he was able to do for golf. Do you know what I mean? It's a massive opportunity. Yeah. So what Serena has been able to do yeah. for tennis, yeah. huge opportunity. These are not coincidences yeah, in that true. sense, you know? And yeah. I think that we have to be, we can't be naive when we're mm. looking and we're dealing with brands, but still at the same time, we can celebrate because it's a small win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sense, yeah. You know? course, so I think yeah. that's important, yeah. Um, I, I, love, I mean, this is it's slightly animated, but I love hearing more from athletes about who gets the sponsorships. Ah! <laughs> yeah, and who doesn't? You know, it's like yeah. people are always saying it's always like the really sexy ones that yeah. get the, <laughs> you know, that they get the all the big brands. You've got to be even, marketable, right? Again, it's down to money, mm. isn't it? What's yeah, so sad, true. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. <sighs> do you do you ever do you think that like in terms of your race, just going back to like the representation that you saw, all these amazing like black 
mm -hmm. um, runners. Do you think that they, that you had you had an advantage because of just because of your race? Do you think naturally, or do you think that you can't obviously can't just be like I'm black, I'm a, I'm an athlete because <laughs> it didn't work for me? Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you know? But do you know what I mean? Do you think that do you do you think there's any advantage? Do you think that you, I think you do think there's an advantage actually. Mm. I think you grow up and you kind of see that everyone on the TV is running fast mm. and they're of a particular colour. Yeah. Mm. So then all of a sudden there's a confidence there. You think to yourself actually why can't I be that fast because I look like that yeah. person? Yeah. yeah. As opposed to maybe a young white girl looking and thinking. I might not be able to line up with these women. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is why when I do see Caucasian women or non-black women sprinting very fast and beating everyone, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, OK. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> like, where, where, where yeah. have you come from? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I, think yeah. it's, I think there's a mental barrier there from the first instance, but you can flip reverse that. Mm. We feel the same when we're in spaces that we don't necessarily feel like we might be able yeah, to drive yeah, yeah. Yeah. in the pool. For so example, do you know what I mean? So yeah. these, these, these are, these are the things. of white people trying not to drown. <laughs> Being kicked in the face it, in an open it, water it, swim it, competition, it, like, is, I can do this. So when you, can, when you can actually flip that and be the person that goes against the grain, yeah. I respect you very highly, mm. actually, because mm. there's a black American swimmer called Simone Manuel. Yes, yeah, I know. Yeah. I've researched Absolutely her, unreal. In fact, I think, I think the stat is she holds the most world championship mm. medals, gold medals yeah. um, ever. And the wow. first. Well, yeah, and she's the, the first, first to get one, yeah. And... You look at her, she's black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so funny because our black people can't swim and you're like, okay, but the woman who's making history doing it is yeah. like yeah. really black. So do you yeah. think it, there's not more black swimmers because we haven't seen it in the past? Yeah, yeah. As absolutely. As opposed yeah, to yeah. We can't, we're just not good absolutely. enough. Absolutely. You can't tell me that you can't go to sub-Saharan Africa and pick out a kid that could be an amazing mm. swimmer. Mm. You know, I was in Ghana over Christmas and we were on the river, of course, on board, beautiful in, um, in, uh, in Ghana, the Volta region. And there's kids just swimming yeah. up and down in the, in yeah. the water, naked, yeah, yeah. you know, just having a great time. I'm like, this was quite deep, mm. yeah. but they're having a great time. And I just thought, mm. this is a natural ability that they've been able to do. Give them the resource, give them the training, yeah. and give them the circumstance. Why wouldn't they be able yeah. to be as good I as? I think it's hugely cultural as well. Absolutely. And I think that, I think as a generation starts to push forward and see mm. that these things are for mm. everybody, like you will see a shift in that change, a shift mm. in, that, in that way of thinking. It's so funny because my husband um, did a triathlon open water swim and it was his first one he had to do the Thames he was really nervous oh, the Thames. yeah and he made me laugh because he was getting into the water every day he'd go swimming and he'd do his thing but in a pool yeah so um must have been about two weeks before the try and I've gone online and I've said oh babe I'm just reading about the swim and stuff and it says that you know no this sorry I'm telling it wrong he said that oh if I get tired I'm just gonna do backstroke yeah. I said okay <laughs> so I looked oh. at the rules and the rules said if we see you on your back, oh, that means you're you in out. trouble. Yeah, 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 yeah. they're going to oh. come for you. He read that. I've never seen a black man go white before. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next morning, the man's in the pool. He's like, right, I'm going to keep doing this. And he oh, trained so hard. Yeah. And he did it. Like, yeah. he did it in the end. And, How long was the swim? Oh, gosh, you're testing is it me now. 1500? I think it's a 1500 yeah, meter swim or 800 meter swim. Yeah. It's a sprint. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did you do that it's one? horrible. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's but you've yeah. it's, it's, you got to do it. You know, if it's part of the, yeah, part of yeah, the course yeah. and you sign up for it. But it just goes to show with the mindset, yeah. you know, you can put your mind to it. We take our yeah. son swimming once a week. Yeah. You know, he's a natural for the water. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's really important that he kind of understands that, yes, mummy and daddy can do it, so can I. And that's yeah. really important. Yes, yeah, definitely. How do you think we, we would encourage women of colour to exercise more? Like I think what you tend to find, a lot of young black women, by the time they get to their early 20s, it becomes more about body consciousness. So they want to make sure that they look a certain way, mm -hmm. they're right for a certain time of the year. <laughs> and I think that what would be great, that's nice, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't judge on that, but what would be nice is if you could have that alongside with the fact that actually what exercise does is bring so many health yeah. and wellness benefits. So many. So many. So many. And I'd love to be able to say, right, you can be able to boost your immune system. You could be able to have a great sense of mental health. Mm -hmm. And also, you know what? You could be in a position where you feel so confident, yeah, yeah. body confident, yeah. no one can tell you nothing. Mm -hmm. Like the endorphins and yeah. all the hormones mm -hmm. that it kicks off is brilliant. So like, I'm a massive advocate for making sure that women understand that not just about looking right. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah, there's other things that come that with is, that. That is so me right now with my marathon training. Yeah. Um, sorry, just mentioning the marathon. <laughs> <laughs> Did I mention the marathon? Because um, the marathon, yeah. So just me with the marathon training, like nobody told me that just running, running three times a week would literally 
get rid of my IBS. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, nobody told me. Yeah. I had had stomach problems for so long, yeah. and this is not like a medical, like, no. you know, I'm not, this is not a fact, but I just know from personal opinions, I had so many problems with my IBS. As soon as I started running, I haven't had a single stomach pain, stomach cramp, mm -hmm. and also, and I am a bit bigger, actually, since I've been running, because I've been building muscle, um, I feel fantastic. And it's bizarre, because I think that we don't, it's just not widely publicised. Yeah. We always see and hear in fitness about the look, the aesthetic. We never talk about the mental, yeah. the, the stress because, levels. You know, what, unfortunately, Shuri, for that, that, that is such a brilliant advert for running. But unfortunately, 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 it's the look and it's aesthetic yeah. that yeah. sells. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that's where, again, we come down to the fact that it's what we're plugged into and what we're tuned into in terms of our conditioning when we think about sport and exercise versus the actual real hardcore benefit. Mm. There are so many running clubs. There's so many running initiatives, mm. like park run on a mm. Saturday morning. Like, for free. So like you just go down and you just do it for yeah. free. You meet a community of people and network of people and the crowds are getting more diverse, yeah, you know? Yeah. My husband, all ages Yeah, all well. ages. Yeah. My, my husband goes down on a Saturday, I'll watch from the sidelines. Yeah. I know what God made my body for. Yeah. It's not 5K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think um, when you see those kind of running groups and understand that actually the movement is growing, yeah. you can see the benefits and you can see the happiness. Like, it's very rare that you'll see people really moody or yeah, miserable. Yeah, yeah, like, the yeah. running community is actually a really positive. It one. is so positive yeah. and it's so accepting. Mm -hmm. This is something that I've noticed, like, I started running with New Balance. I'm doing a partnership with New Balance, and I started running with like some of their kind of like elite kind of guys. And they're so fast, and they run like 5K in like I don't know 15, 20 minutes. I'm like, okay, so yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, you come back to the at the end, and everyone's like, oh, that's amazing. Like, yeah. well done. Like you're the last person there. Obviously, I'm the last person there. And they're like, you did so well. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Have a beer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just this whole different way of thinking about exercise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a it's not a competition. It's not um, who can be the thinnest, who can be the most attractive, who's wearing the nicest Gymshark trousers. You know, it's literally we are all in this together. Yeah. And that sense of community, I think is another layer of the positive mental yeah. health benefits and health benefits yeah. that you can get from it. I mean, I, I once had a theory that a, a lot of the black and um, ethnic minority, a lot of the women, they don't tend to train in their early ages because naturally, genetically, they have the figure that they, they want. Mm. So that's the reason why they don't tend to go to the gym. And it's only when they start hitting a later age where things yeah. start to change and they're like, OK, now I'm going to go to the gym. There's truth in that. Yeah. There's truth in that. And I think also, also, and I think this is across the board, if I'm honest, and I've seen it with women, it's just down to muscular kind of appearances. Mm. You, you genuinely think when you're 15 or 16, oh, my God, if I do a session once a week, I'm yeah. going to like a bodybuilder. Yeah. No, that's yeah, not the case. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? I think that, again... It, it's, it's an aesthetic, isn't yeah. it? And it's very negative at a certain age, but you kind of start to desire it when you get to, mm, yeah. you know, mid-20s, early 30s. By the time you're 40, you are screaming for a six-pack. Yeah, you're like, yeah, oh, my yeah. God, I would, <laughs> I would love a six-pack. But then again, it's just trying to change that mindset, yeah. isn't it? And understand yeah. that it is not about So when you were training, what was, the, what was your, peer, your peer group saying? Like, your friends, like, obviously, you're hitting a track all the time and uh, you're looking a, diff a certain way and your friends are there going out, uh, doing lit life You and guys all have that. to remember, I'm from West African household, yeah? yeah. Okay. So if I'm turning up and I'm in peak condition, yeah. my aunties are screaming at me <laughs> because they're like, what have you done? Where have you gone? Okay, and they're yeah. just throwing food at me. Yeah, Can yeah. you eat this? Can you eat that? I'm like, auntie, listen, I have to be this way yeah. to get from A to B as fast as I can. And, you know, I'd be, oh, at my best, I think I'd, I was in and around nine stone. Like, yeah, 58 wow. kilos. It was ridiculous. And I look back at pictures now and I'm like, who even is that? Because it's not my natural shape. Yeah, do you yeah, know what I mean? Okay. And I think that I understand that when you, when I was going to retire, you know, I was going to slap on easily, you know, 10 to 15 kilos mm. because that's naturally what I am. Yeah, yeah. And it's about accepting that and learning from that. But a lot of the time, as you, the better you get and the more serious you get, the more professional you get, friends and family start to understand that you have to look that yeah, way yeah. in order to be able to do your job. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that is where we kind of left it. Now, there'll be days I turn up and, you know, cheekbones are jutting out. Yeah, and, wow. yeah. I mean, crazy shape. You know, two weeks before the Beijing Olympics, I was on the most crazy diet and nobody could understand yeah, why I yeah. had to do it. But I'm like, it is performance. I really want to hear more about this time in your life, though. This, um, like, this peak time. How hard was it? 
for you to stay like that? Um, and mentally as well, how did yeah. that, what was the effect of that? Let's go back. I was 25 at my peak peak. And I think to myself, 25 years old, you are really distracted actually, because mm. there's a lot going on mm. around you in terms of what your friends are doing, people are starting to make money now, you're all out of uni mm. and people are in relationships. It's, it's a really different time. And then you're this person who actually kind of bases your whole life on what's happening every four years. Mm -hmm. So every year in between an, an, an Olympic cycle, you are completely focused on these goals. So I was very goal driven, if that makes sense. Like I understood the process, mm -hmm. but I was absolutely consumed with making sure that I hit my goals. Mm -hmm. So whether that be short term, mid term or long term, that was all I cared about. So there was a really selfish mm. mentality. And you have to be. You have to be, yeah. yeah. And you know, it's not nice. Mm. Let's be honest, it is not nice because I guess you've got a team of training partners. Yeah, you care about them, but at the same time... I'm trying to beat them. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you're here for yourself. Yeah. It's a very individual sport. I didn't do well at team games at school. Mm. Yeah. And that's just a personality thing, you know? And yeah, I love to play netball, but if we lost, I was a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. And that's the reality, mm. you know? And I can admit that now, but I know that's kind of what made me good as an athlete. Yeah, yeah. I can't do that now. Okay. Mm. I can't do that now. You know, every decision I make now, I've got to think about my children. Yeah, yeah. I've got to think about my family. So it's almost <laughs> unlearning all the selfishness. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to now be in this new phase of my life, I'm like, mm. Do your handbook on that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm selfish. Unlearn, unlearn selfishness. <laughs> so in terms of being able to stay motivated, it wasn't hard mm. because you had the goals that you needed to be able to do. And because that was your every waking moment, mm. there was nothing else I could think about. You Did know? it affect you mentally, though, having to be so, like you said, such a small weight? I don't think and so. And dieting, did that affect you? Mm. And when, when your family had those comments, like, about, oh, you know, oh, gosh, you're really no. no, I'll tell you why, no, because I guess when you are in that type of shape and you're running really well... Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, actually, I'm doing the right thing here. Yeah, so you're like, can be body's quite a quiet. machine. Yeah, yeah. And it, was, it, was, it was that, okay. you know. I, I, it's almost as if I didn't belong to my body. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I just, it, it, was, it was there to function. Yeah. yeah. It was there to just do what it had to do. Like, I wasn't really connected to it yeah. in that kind of really emotional way. Yeah. It was very much like, yeah, wow, my abs are looking mad today. Look <laughs> at my calves. Wow, look at my body. Oh, my glutes are on fire. And, I, and, I talk, and I'm talking yeah. away that it would yeah. be like, okay. Yeah. Has your relationship good. with your body changed Completely. since yeah. you've retired? Completely yeah. changed. Like, and it's a, it's, it's a, it blows my mind sometimes. <laughs> like, I'll be waking up in the morning, I'll be looking at certain things, I'll be like, ooh. Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> and I, it's like, <laughs> I never knew I, <laughs> I had this. <laughs> so is it, is, that has changed massively. Okay. And then you have kids. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I look at pictures of my six pack and I'm like, that's not going to happen again, is it? It's not going to happen. Do you still work out? Go on. Still... I do. Okay. I do work out. In fact, I bought an, uh, probably other brands are available, <laughs> but I bought a very expensive bike that you have in your house. A okay. cycle on yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. So I've got one of those and I'm on it every day and it, oh. yeah, and it just makes you feel good. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, I it's, just, love it's just the exercise and the stuff like that. But yeah, back to your question, my relationship with my body has changed. My relationship with food has changed mm. a lot as well. And um, it, it's, it's kind of interesting to kind of see how it's playing out. Okay. But um, it's, a, it's a process, it's a journey, isn't it? Mm. You know, and I think that... I have to be able to be in a position to, to own it. Yeah, yeah, as well. yeah, 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 yeah. Your relationship with food in a positive way has yeah. changed? In a positive way. Yeah, yeah, most days. Yeah. There are days I'm eating, I'm thinking, oh, I shouldn't be eating this, but you're yeah. still going for it. And I'm not burning the calories yeah, I used yeah. to, but I'm still going for it. But, you know, and I think that it's just, again, understanding and owning it mm -hmm. that that's where we're at and that's where I have to be. Mm -hmm. But you, I think everybody has their yeah, days where yeah. a bit like, oh. Are you still able to run or? Not to the level that yeah, I yeah, want. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. So if I'm honest, that kind of annoys me a bit because okay. I'm a bit like, mm, what's the point? Yeah, yeah. So I tend to do the training that I enjoy. So okay. circuits, weight training, okay. jump on the bike. So we're quite an active household okay. when, okay. We, when we want to be. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's, been, it's been interesting kind of seeing the transition and I'm still learning because I'm only, what, six years out of retirement? Okay. Yeah, yeah, six, seven years out of retirement, which actually is still, you know, a short, amount of time considering I did it from 15 to 30. Wow. So, you know, I raced for 15 years of my life. Wow. So it was a long time. And yeah. also I was Wikipedia in your bra. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
do you wear that around the house? <laughs> my, my medals. Your medals. I've got a few, like, <laughs> my big, my big, um, I've got a couple of world medals. I've got a junior world medal bronze and I've got a world silver medal from the indoors. I don't wear them around the house. You should. I've got them in like a little box. You should get them made into of, earrings. Yeah. It's really funny what actually. What did you yeah. say? Get them made into earrings. Earrings, like big medals <laughs> or like Mr. T medallions. Yeah, exactly. I, get them added onto a jacket. Yeah, mm. that's a good shout, you know. Right. I tell you what, I... I'm not maybe most athletes, not mm. all. But if you ask athletes where they keep their medals, they're not very that precious about them, you okay. know. Really? Is it the time? So I am so precious about my 10k medals. Yeah, it's just it's just the, the status, just the history. Okay. Yeah. So if your name's in a book and it says you did this on this day, yeah. bang, that's yeah. it. No one can take that away from you. And I guess they can't take away a medal, but yet it's tangible and you can hold it and stuff. I don't after know. you initially presented with it, you know, you just it's kind just of, yeah, memory. it's just like, it's the, mem it's the memory more so, I think. See, but with my medal from my 10K run, yeah. <laughs> I got my first one. I was so happy. I hung it, like, on the back of my door. I looked at it all the yeah, time. Yeah, I've got my medals on the door. Yeah, well. yeah, you, are, you wear your medals in yeah, pictures yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I see yeah. from your ultra... The Iron Ultra? Man. Ultra? Iron Man. Yeah, 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 so I know about your, where your husband's going through with yeah. the whole open water. I've done it. You, did, just, a, you did an just Ultra? I've done, no, done an Iron Man. Man. So you did a whole 70.3 Iron Man. Where did what you do it? What is an Iron Man? Uh, I've done oh, one in, done in, <laughs> one in <laughs> Lanzarote <laughs> and then one in the south of France wow. as well. Wow. Yeah. How long is it? What is it though? Can you so remind me? The swim is 1.9 kilometres. The bike is 114 or something like that. And then it's a half marathon run. Afterwards. Okay, so you do know a bike, 140 miles, that is basically London to Leicester. <laughs> yeah. And then 1.9 kilometres swimming. Yeah. Is, what's that? I don't know. It's far. Miles. It's, far. it's far. It's so it's far. far. It's far. <laughs> Very impressive. And then a half marathon and the end of that. 13 miles to finish. Just, yeah. to, just end it. How long yeah. did it take you? It took me six hours, something like that. Literally but like, takes me that long to get ready. I had, to, I had to learn how to swim again. Like I wasn't yeah. a natural swimmer. Like I go swim into the pool and I'm just up one down and I'll be out of breath after 25 yeah. meters. Where there's other people just effortlessly gliding through the water. I had to learn to do, do all of that. Glide. Yeah, people I had to learn really to do, do all of that. It doesn't matter how much I practice my technique. I don't think I don't know. I don't know if I'm just using my race here, but I do feel like it's harder for me to swim. And it's a I technical don't, thing. I don't glide as much. It's yeah, technical. It's technical. I think there mm. are certain things. And also, if you had the practice and the time to be able to learn those technical mm. things, you yeah. glide. Same with cycling. Same with running. Yeah. You know, there are like... Running is so technical. It's technical. Oh, people so technical. Mean. Like, okay. Right. If you commute, you go to work, yeah? You jump on a bus, you jump on a tube. You see when you see people pacing for the tube yeah. and running for the bus, <laughs> their head's back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tech <laughs> and they are burning. <laughs> and they are burning to catch that bus. Or train. Yeah. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, brother, like, let me tell you something. <laughs> Drop your head. <laughs> your arms. Your legs are all out here. <laughs> you, you, you'll be all right. You'll yeah. get there so much faster than what you're trying to do right now. So true. But... It's, it's natural. You, yeah, you do what's so ever. True. It's such a primitive form of getting from A to B. Yeah. And you just do it whichever way you think is necessary. Same with swimming. You just splash. Yeah. You yeah, just try yeah, and get yeah. there. But if you've got the time to practice and you learn the techniques, you've got the right equipment, mm. then you'll be able to do it properly. Mm. It's just time. Mm. I would never write it off and say, you know, that you wouldn't be able to glide because I promise you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just being a bit negative because yeah. yeah. I get jealous. Do you, do you, do you <laughs> mentor anyone who's still running? I do. I've got a couple of mentees that I'm really excited about, actually. Um, one of them is a black swimmer, Alice Deering. Yeah. She's okay. fantastic. Um, she's aiming for Tokyo this year. She okay. does she does open water swimming, 10K okay. swims. Oh, wow. And I mentor... 10K, um, 10K swimming, she's, she's unreal. What? She's mixed race. She's brilliant. I she's brilliant, brilliant, her. brilliant. And then I've got um, Imani Lansico. She's a sprinter. Okay, yeah, really young girl. Yeah, yeah. She's from South London. And Ashley Nelson, who I used to train with as well. Um, she's fantastic. So I've got a couple of sprinters, a swimmer. And they're just all nice girls mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that want to do good things. And I think yeah. that... If I catch a vibe and your spirit is nice, yeah, yeah. then I'll be able to just offload any information that you want and mm. we'll just go from there, you know? Mm. So do you talk to them more about, like, life as an athlete or is it more about just the technique of running? Whatever they want. Okay. Whatever they want. Obviously, I can't tell Alice much about swimming. <laughs> but with the girls that I do with track and field, whatever it is they want, if they need me to look at a video of their starts or their longer runs or wow. just talk about the day mm. or if they're having drama with a training partner or a coach yeah. or teammate, whatever it is, like, I'm here to, to just listen That's and amazing. be able to say, OK, this is maybe how you should do it. And I'm quite conscious of saying, oh, when I did it, because yeah, actually, yeah. you know what, everyone's journey is different. Mm. Yeah. You know, I've got a blueprint 
you can follow it, but it's highly likely yeah. you'll end up somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so I try not to kind of be that person that is too much self-absorbed in terms of when I'm giving my advice. No, that's amazing. Mm. I want to touch on one thing that we didn't cover and I just remembered that I wanted to ask you your thoughts. Stereotypes mm. in, in um, different, different sports. So do you believe that any of them, like racial stereotypes, do you think any of them actually have any fact behind them? Um, you know, like... <sighs> Black people like, run black faster. People running faster. faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sprinting, yeah. long distance, being people lighter. Yeah, I think physically, I think physically, there are some elements to having an advantage. Mm. And I think it's really important that we don't call them stereotypes because mm. of the negative connotations that mm. come yeah. with that. I think as um, a race, a black race, we have uh, a denser muscle mass in terms of how we're able to to be able to build up our muscle yeah, as well. Yeah. The fast twitch fibres. The fast twitch fibres versus the slow twitch fibres. But then that's across the board because you could say that, yeah, you know, sub-Saharan Africans are really, really fast. Of course, then you've got the Jamaicans, you know, when you talk about the Atlantic slave trade and moving over. But then you go across the continent to Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia, mm. and then you're dealing with a different kind of athlete yeah, altogether, yeah, yeah. you know. But then you have to say, say that actually when you look at what other athletes that are non-black are then able to do mm. in the water, maybe, on the track, the mm. longer distance runners. You've got people like Paula Radcliffe. You've got people like the Ingebrigtsen brothers, mm. these brothers that are from Norway, yeah. who are doing unreal things in distance running. You know, it, it's all about being able to give the access and the opportunity to people and see how they develop with yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So stereotypes, it's just such a... I get it, but I, I feel like it's just such... It just comes with such negativity, such yeah. a shame. Yeah. Because it could be something that you say to the kids, actually, you know what, you know, own it mm. and understand mm. that, mm. yeah, you can be good at it, but this, that's not your be all and end Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's and really, really important. you're not really going to be good at it just because just you have because those things. Of, yeah. yeah. You still need determination and grit and hard work. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And even when you think about stereotypes in terms of how black footballers, for example, are talked about in the media. Oh, yeah, he's pacey. You know, yeah, he's, just, powerful. He's, he's powerful. Look at him, he's aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what a stupid term. Yeah, yeah, but, like, yeah. we know what you're saying. Yeah, of you course. See what I mean? yeah. So I think that's, again, really important that we, we challenge that mm. yeah. and understand, yeah, of course he's going to be fast because, you know, maybe he looks a certain yeah. way. It's very rare they talk about the intelligence, intelligence. of a player. And I'm like, yeah. but look, wow. he's making decisions, actually, yeah. that are leading to a goal. Strategy, yeah. 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 Do you, exactly, you see what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Let's I never even that. thought about it like that. Yeah. No, I don't really watch football, but I do kind of see bits and bobs in the yeah. media. Yeah. And it's so true. I think just the narrative in general about yeah. how certain races get spoken yeah. about in the media. I mean, yeah. I don't know. This is probably a huge separate topic. Yeah. But it is still very much like... It's huge. Yeah. It's a massive, massive deal. And I think that Raheem Sterling very recently came mm -hmm. out and he yeah, said that yeah. they need more diverse media because mm -hmm. there are certain stories, actually, that are so embedded in racial stereotypes yeah that people really don't even see it. Yeah. You don't even yeah. know They're unaware there. that they're even completely. saying it. Completely. Mm. So, again, that's a completely different can of worms, I yeah. guess, for probably yeah. another complete day. Yeah, it's like a but whole new focus. It is. But I yeah. guess it's, it's, it's a really important one that you touch on yeah. when you are dealing with race and sport because yeah. it's all-encompassing when you think mm -hmm. about it. And you're mm -hmm. working in media, so mm -hmm. are you seeing the differences, the changes? Oh, uh, yeah, and I'm big on shifting things and I call people out and I'll Which be like, Which is amazing. Yeah. And yeah, I love that to. because you need people. You we need more people. Um, like I was saying earlier about the interview that I did on the BBC and they asked me, Sharifa, what's your biggest challenge with this swim? And I said, it's finding a swim cap. <laughs> and then when I saw the interview, the final interview, it was actually cut to, Sharifa, what's your biggest challenge doing the swim? And it's me going, do, do you think there's going to be ducks in, in there? Because oh, it's, sort of, it's yeah. a bit cold, doesn't it? They you know? will never. And I'm like, wow, yeah. you had not... And I repeated it, because I've done a little bit of media training. Yeah. I repeated it three yeah. times mm. over. But yeah. just the one little thing that I said, when yeah. I didn't even know the camera was yeah. rolling, and they yeah. used that, and I was so disappointed. Because yeah. I thought... You had an opportunity there but to they showcase do. something that's they important, yeah. but the producer or whoever probably said, mm, that's not really like, that's not really what we want to talk no. about, let's just do something that's completely fun. different, yeah. And that's, and exactly that's a shame. Which is why that's very recently, why Alice Deering, you know, yeah. the black swimmers come out and said, actually, we'd love to get more young black kids involved in the sport. There's mm. not enough. There's so mm. much talent yes. out there. There's too many barriers. And mm. now that conversation's a bit louder. That agenda's a little bit louder now. Mm. I love that. And that's important. But yeah, but listen, the media will always 
put in their agenda and what they exactly. think suits you as a personality or what they want it to kind of fit mm. on the website or online or whatever so it may true. look like. And it's just and frustrating. I'm excited know. to see uh, the Black Swimmers Association because they're going to be swimming at the Serpentine this year. Are they? And I'm going to be swimming too. Yes. And I may be swimming with And them. how's the training going? Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, at the moment we've got, a bit of, we've got a bit of um, coronavirus yeah. going on so it's not really like a, oh, wow, yeah. Not, yeah not much hanging not out in pools but yeah. um i'm really looking forward to to seeing what what the press do with that yeah, yeah. because they're going to be there they're going to be championing championing diversity when i was there last year it really was and it, i <laughs> excuse my french a sea of white people yeah and that's fine that's absolutely fine but we are in London, yeah. and I thought this sport is, it, it should include everybody, it should be, it should be open out. to everybody, yeah. and it, it really is still very much a white sport. Yeah. And, but it shouldn't be that way. Culturally, Cult I think culturally, yeah, yeah like you're right, there needs to be exactly. a massive shift. You can go to a local pool, and you'll see the you know, little Caribbean aunties in there, they're the yeah. little brushstroke end to end, yeah, keeping yeah, yeah, fit, yeah. and yeah. that's yeah. nice, yeah. and that's important. Yeah. So. What, what's next for you? So for me, at the minute, um, we are trying to navigate the year that is Corona year in mm -hmm. terms of just making sure that we um, are getting a sporting calendar that looks normal. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So Olympics is the big thing for us this year, 2020, and then the Paralympics pretty much straight after. So um, as of today, we're just hoping that everything is going according to plan and we'll be able to do that and just make sure we can get out there and broadcast and bring mm -hmm. the world, you know, the Olympics, which... For me, listen, being able to compete there, then going to report on it and present amazing. it is just what a like, like a, It's amazing that your life has been able to take this. So happy. You've still yeah. been able to stay within what you yeah. really love. And yeah. I think having that inside knowledge and that background is what really brings the passion out, even if, even listening to you talk about it now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like so inspired. I'm going to go <laughs> and look at all your pictures and be like, yay, I want to be, I want to win a gold no, medal. I'm a proper yeah. Olympic head. Yeah. Like, yeah. So okay. when it comes down to the games, you know, I live for the games. I love it, I love it, love it, love it. And I think that, um, you know, I do a little bit of work for the IOC, so the International Olympic Committee, mm -hmm. and they had a massive conference um, early last year that I took my daughter to when she was six weeks old. Because wow. I just had her and I'm like, right, I can't miss this. And I was hosting this three-day conference. And it was very much about the athletes and how they want to see the movement go mm -hmm. forward. And they got, you know, 400 athletes from all over the world. And I was hosting this big thing and we were really talking about it. And I was so impassioned yeah, about yeah. it. And I thought, Jeanette, you've got to remember, you're hosting this. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, can't, you can't get too involved here. Yeah, you start yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, spouting your opinion. But I got it and I understood it. Mm. And I think as a broadcaster... Hopefully that comes across when I'm talking about it. Does, it does, it really does. Well. And I just think the passion that you bring to even like uh, women, just a, a, a woman listening to you talk about women's sport, it just makes me feel so much more included and so much more like a voice that I really connect to. Yeah. So it's really nice to hear. Thank you. Where can we find you? So I'm on, I'm on the gram. I'm not a Grammy Grammy. Yeah, 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 I'm not a Grammy Grammy. You know? <laughs> like, I do like a few stories, but it's so boring. Like, it's just me and my kids. I'm like, <laughs> like a filter. Oh, there's a cupcake. She's making yeah. today. You're a mumfluencer. Yeah, I'm a mum. I'm, you know, listen, some mumfluencers are killing it. I'm like, right, I, love, I would love that brand partnership. <laughs> right. Free buggy, free nappies. That's but no, I, I'm literally, I'm on Instagram at Just Jeanette and then just whack my name into Twitter, Jeanette Kwachi, and yeah. you'll find me there and occasionally you know i'll be giving an opinion on something but i talk a lot of sport yeah. you know, sometimes a little bit of social commentary but i'm really chilled in that sense on social but yeah my main show monday monday no my main show is on a friday night seven till eight bbc radio london and then you can find me across bbc sports sky sports just doing my thing most of the time and you can also uh, we can also google images of you running yeah don't running running, running, running oh what you God. think is <laughs> slow but is extraordinarily fast <laughs> and you look like a, a, a athena goddess <laughs> of the so night much. can so. we can we race after this <laughs> no <Nah, Yeah>. man <laughs> I, just, I, don't, I don't race for free anymore <laughs> <laughs> how often do you get that you must get that a lot i get it from men a lot yeah i can yeah, imagine yeah, I from wow. men and it's so funny and I'm like I would never race you for free <laughs> but um, if we want to it depends what kind of mood I'm in okay. <laughs> but yeah I get it a lot Great. All right. thank you so much thank, thank you. you so much thank you guys okay that is a wrap woo yeah.